Hello everybody, I'm Gamester522 and welcome to Metroid Dread. A Metroid sequel that we have been waiting for years. So I'm not going to waste any time. Let's just go ahead and get started on it. Now, just for context's sake, I have played through this game five times already since its release. And my sleeping schedule got reversed because of it. But anywho, how we're going to go about doing this, this is going to be 100% 100 on hard mode and hopefully under four hours. Because in all my times of playing this game, I did not do any sequence breaking for my first four attempts, but then I started to learn about some that had just been discovered. Granted, there are going to be a lot more sequence breaks that will be happening as by the time these videos go up, so I'm mainly only going to cover like a few, I'd say namely three, maybe four, I guess you would call it four, but anywho. But... Under four, four hours is the time that you're expected to do in order to get, like, the best, the best gallery images. Now, 100% items, items is its own category, and item, and item percentage does not factor into endings or anything like that. <clears throat> I'm just super nervous about doing this because... I'm going to be going really fast, and because this game is very punishing when it comes to time, especially the cleanup, it usually takes me about an hour to go back to all the old areas and pick up items I missed. But without further ado, let's just get started. Metroid, a virulent floating organism that drained energy from its prey through physical contact. Metroids were originally created by the Chozo and named them after their word for Ultimate Warrior. Their value as a bioweapon sparked several crises, and as a result, all traces of them have been eliminated. They are now extinct. X Parasite, a gelatinous parasitic organism indigenous to the planet SR388. It could absorb the DNA of its host, living or dead, and replicate its form. When infecting a living host, it could even access the host's memories. Ex-parasites were driven not by emotion, but an instinctive need to replicate and spread to increasingly stronger hosts. Their inability to be controlled marked them an even more dangerous than their sole predator, the Metroids. Like the Metroids, they are believed extinct. With no Metroid surviving on SR388, it became infested with the X, horrifying parasites capable of imitating any living being. Unaware of this, I set foot on the planet, got infected, and almost died. The only thing that saved me was a vaccine created from Metroid DNA, which, all, which also left me un uniquely able to oppose the X. This ability was attested immediately when I went to the BSL station to investigate a distress signal. There I battled many powerful X forms including the SAX, which was the X mimicking me and my power suit at full strength. I eventually eliminated the X, menace and the X Menace on SR388 by setting the BSL research station on a collision course with the planet. After that, the X and Metroids were just memories, or so we thought. Just as all seemed over, the Galactic Federation received a mysterious video transmission.
Sheldon X alive and in the wild. Thorough analysis proved the video was real, although the sender was unknown. The transmission was traced to a peculiar planet. It was called ZDR. If the X had somehow escaped extinction out there, they would pose a threat to the entire galaxy. The Galactic Federation dispatched a research team of seven ME to investigate. An ME is a large research robot designed to capture field samples and extract their DNA. Their incredible mobility and protective plating, made of the strongest stuff in the universe, practically guaranteed the mission's success. But not long after their arrival on ZDR, all communication was lost. What is happening on ZDR? Is the planet really infested with X? As the only one immune to the parasites, it's up to me to go there and find out. Also, I'll make a habit to edit out these loading times. That way you guys aren't bothered with it. Soon be entering ZDR's atmosphere. The bounty for this mission does not seem appropriate. The risk clearly outweighs the reward. That elevator leads to the depths of an underground facility. Signal quality is likely to be low. Remote communication remains reasonable. Try to connect to the facility's network when you reach the bottom. That way, they can be in contact. Any objections, please.
Alright guys, and with that we're officially on our way. Welcome to Metroid Dread. So we know how to play a Metroid game. This thing this one has some new things to it. Uh, we can actually slide through small gaps, and wall kicking is just a simple press of a button. And it looks like we found a network room. Uploading data. So, you've accessed the network station. Well done, Samus. I have reviewed your vital signs and video log from the data you uploaded. I've run a full analysis but I cannot account for why you lost consciousness. My readings indicate dramatic physical changes in you. Whatever caused these changes seems to have stripped you of most abilities. You might call it physical amnesia. That brings me to your assailant. I am checking the Federation database against your video log. It appears to have been a chozo. The attacker's identity is not yet clear. I have determined that you are somewhere within the depths of ZDR. Your top priority should be to return to your ship on the surface. This situation is precarious. Trust your instincts as you navigate upward. This planet appears to consist of multiple areas. Shuttles, elevators, and other modes of transport connect them. Keep an eye out for ways to reach the surface. The ship's location is marked on your global map. Check it for yourself. You may encounter pockets of low temperature. Your Metroid DNA renders you vulnerable to such environments. Spending time in cold areas will be harmful to you. There are many such cold areas scattered underground. Do not enter them with your basic power suit. One final thing. Underground interference is preventing radio transmissions. Check in with me at any network stations you find. Alright then. Nah, I'm only gonna save at the beginning and end of videos. Just to make my life easier. And this game brings in something from Samus Returns, the counter. When an enemy when an enemy flashes and attacks us, we can counter back at them. Also, we are on hard mode, so you need to watch the, you need to watch your damage intake. It gets pretty bad. If an area on the map is bleaking, it indicates that hidden item is there. Now, this isn't true for every single item, but yeah. Missile st mi a missile tank increases our capacity by two. And where is this? An enemy, an enemy attack can be countered by pressing X the exact moment of the flash. However, the timing is extremely difficult to gauge, making this a desperate maneuver. And now we're going to slide under him and just say fuck off. missing his arm, so it looks like he can't climb up. What the hell is this? Energy from the central unit transformed the arm cannon into an Omega cannon. Omega Blaster online. Now we have 
a, pow a much more powerful arm cannon. Which we're going to use against this Emmy by shooting him right in the face. And that's that. Omega cannon depleted and offline, reverting to regular arm cannon. All right, we're gonna go ahead and head back up here because now we can go to the door on this side. That was a save room, by the way. Now, whenever you see red cracks in the in the walls and stuff. It'll open up some kind of organic part of the wall, which we can shoot and blow up. And this is a weird door. Freaky. This is a unique place. Yep, can't do anything against that. Looks like that Emmy can't go through small, small. Looks like Emmys can't go through small holes. Haha. Uh -huh. All right, let's just go ahead and get up. We want to head down here. Haha, you can't get me. Alright. Now then, ow. We're gonna go ahead and grab another missile expansion here. Make sure you slide under that ceiling bastard there. Uploading data. Both Emmy you encountered were clearly trying to capture you. They may have been hacked. If so, it's reasonable to assume all Emmy will be hostile. Emmy sent out a pulse to detect vibrations in the air within a certain range. Essentially, they can hear you. Upon detecting vibrations, an Emmy enters surveillance mode to track their source. Stay out of its line of sight when this happens. Otherwise, the danger to you increases dramatically. An Emmy that has seen you will begin pursuit. Part of the pursuit protocol is to seal the Emmy's own exits. You will be trapped inside. To survive, you must leave its range of pursuit. Evade the Emmy and it will disengage. This will also unseal the exits. An Emmy never leaves its assigned zone. Their control system must permit them to operate only within that range. I estimate a 99% probability of death if an Emmy captures you. There may be a very small opportunity to escape, but exploiting this window will be virtually impossible. The Emmy are immune to your current weapons. You lack the unique energy used to defeat the first Emmy. Your only option now is to evade capture and find an exit. Your highest priority in an Emmy zone should be simply to survive. And now I'm going to save my game, and that's going to be it for the first video. So I hope you guys are looking forward to more Metroid Dread. I sure as hell am. And with that, if you enjoyed it, go ahead and drop a like, leave a comment, tell me what you thought. And if you haven't, subscribe to my channel, ring the bell, join the Fox Army, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Till then, see you then.